T-minus three hours and holding as the countdown for launch of the Spatial Atlantis tonight on mission STS-86 continues. The launch is scheduled to occur at about 10.34 p.m. Eastern Time. We have been experiencing some rain showers due to a uh, system that has been moving through Kennedy Space Center. After six shuttle flights to Mir, NASA and the Russians are facing increasing problems with their partnership. Seven members of our flight team are in their crew quarters uh, making last minute preparations uh, being suited for this mission. Both NASA and the Russians want this mission to finally solve all of Mir's problems. The most important objective is the safety of U.S. personnel who are in space. Facing mounting pressure and with their backs to the wall, space agency officials and astronauts are standing firm. Every time an astronaut travels into space, there is risk. In the wake of repeated critical mechanical failures on board Mir, members of Congress want answers. We should all be concerned. Are you sending our astronauts on a suicide mission? Just another day at the office. speak a lot about the benefits of spaceflight, but now for the first time you're really thinking about the risk from the point of view of U-7, come on up here. Seven members of the STS-86 flight team underway to launch pad 39A. I always look at the vehicle and it's hissing and it sounds like it's alive. Just before getting on, you see the solid rocket booster and you see a word on the side of it. And you stop and you think, well, this is pretty cool. And the word says loaded. And you know this is the day you're going somewhere. Atlanta OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. And I like to think to myself, okay, Atlanta, it's you and me now. If I take care of you, you take care of me. All astronauts heroes and say they have the right stuff. But 36 years after Yuri Gagarin rode the first rocket into history, shuttle astronauts aren't famous. They don't ride in parades. Why these astronauts were still willing to strap their butts to 3.8 million pounds of explosives is a story that began long before they stepped into the glare of searchlights surrounding launch pad 39A. In January 1997, as the newly assigned crew of Atlantis met for the first time, the average American was barely aware of the Russian Mir space station, or cared that for two years Americans have been living on board. The shuttle Mir flights were supposed to be phase one of a new joint space program, a critical step if NASA hoped to move on to phase two, construction of the much delayed International Space Station. But with the ISS risking cancellation in another round of congressional budget cutting, no one was paying much attention to the crew of mission STS-86, the seventh shuttle Mir docking flight. Flying up next to a, a space station is something I've dreamed of since I was 10 years old. It was the only thing I've ever wanted to do when, you, when you're a little kid and you watch science fiction movies of people zorching up next to big space stations. And then getting to do it is the culmination of a childhood dream. After flying a desk for two years, veteran commander Jim Weatherby is anxious to trade his power tie for a pressure suit. <laughs> Vladimir Titov is one of the most experienced cosmonauts. Our joint program, this program for future, it is not a program just for one country, it's a program for a planet. The first human to spend a year in space, now he'll be the first non-American to spacewalk from the shuttle. Chief astronaut of the French Space Agency, General Jean-Luc Chrétien, is no stranger to the dangers of spaceflight. Fourteen years before, his oxygen running out and about to lose contact with ground controllers in Moscow, he struggled to close a faulty hatch. I was a guy who had to close the door after we came back in the airlock, and I could not close the door. Door was a, there was a failure in, a, in the door. And that's what the engineers on the ground, that was the last words that they got from us. We cannot close the door. 
and they had to wait 50 minutes and they knew that we could not last 50 minutes you should have seen these poor guys they were every color uh, white uh, gray not talking and uh, eating their nails in space you are in the real stuff after moving to Moscow and training to spend four months on Mir, Dr. Scott Parazinski was replaced when it was discovered he was too tall to fit safely in the Russian Soyuz. Now he'll get a chance to see Mir after all as one of the visitors on the Atlantis crew. I think that uh, all kids at one point or another in their, in their youth dream of becoming an astronaut, and I just sort of never grew out of it. Volody and I are going to spend uh, quite a bit of time underwater. It's about the best simulation we have for the weightlessness of space. Hey, Volodya. Uh huh, I think. All yours. Okie dokie. If someone back in August of 92, when I first moved to Houston, told me that not even five years from now I'd be going and doing a spacewalk with a Russian cosmonaut on a Russian space station, I would have called that science fiction. The good news today is you get to fly a space shuttle manually. The bad news is you get to do it without guidance. Former captain of the Air Force Academy football team, pilot Mike Bloomfield, has his work cut out for him. He's the only rookie on an incredibly experienced crew. Realize that a lot of the techniques that we're going to teach today, as soon as you have to take over manually, your mission as far as the rendezvous with Mir is probably going to be uh, non-existent. Yeah, it'd be neat if there was another new guy in this flight with me. I mean, I would really love to have somebody else who was going through the same thing with me at the same time who had never flown in space. A rookie pilot has the most to learn on a shuttle flight. Okay. And Bloomer's progress will make the difference between success or failure for the entire crew. Okay, everybody, we're going to run here. Three and 104. Roll program. A rolling, rolling, rolling. Most astronauts will tell you that it takes an especially sadistic nature to join the training team. What I like to do is kill calm throughout the duration of powered flight. Okay. How we lose that center engine? This is bad. The no calm aspects are going to make them work very hard amongst themselves. Maybe. Maybe. Houston, abort RTLS now. And we're RTLS. The toughest thing that we do in training is our ascent and entry skills where they throw lots and lots of failures. GPC one's going down. Everything's breaking all at once. You really have to help each other. It's very easy to miss one minor thing like a roll reversal you may have seen in the sim today. Don't miss the roll reversal now. We didn't miss any today, but it's very easy to miss. And if you do, uh, you're pretty much dead. If you Probably 15 minutes into the fire, uh, we were definitely ready to evacuate the station. Fire is something that you always train for and hope never happens, but we all know that occasionally on ships, aircraft, spacecraft, these things do happen. Sparked by a defective oxygen generating canister, the fire destroys Mir's backup oxygen system and fills the orbiting outpost with heavy smoke. Three of the six men on board are cut off from their only means of escape. The fire was basically in this region here, with the flame shooting across this way. So as you can see, it would have been very difficult to get through the flame itself to get to, the, uh, to one of the rescue vehicles. After the fire, conditions on the station grow tense. Cooling problems drive the temperature to near 100 degrees and an angry Leninger becomes increasingly critical of Russian ground control. 